friends. It has been a hot minute since I've done a Q&A video, so I figured I would do one this week. So I went on to Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and I asked you for your cues, and now I am going to aid them. Let's start on Twitter. At Don the Comic Man says, who were your biggest inspirations before making your own music and currently? Growing up before I ever started writing my own music, it was probably my dad. My dad was a songwriter, he sings, he plays piano, so I really grew up with it and grew up watching him do it. And then as far as current inspirations, I really love good lyricists, so if a song has really strong lyrics, I'm always interested in who wrote it. Taylor Swift, Julia Michaels, uh, Phineas and Billie Eilish, I just think they write really good lyrics. At AngelChiChi88 says, thoughts on chihuahuas. All right, don't come at me because this is maybe an unpopular opinion, but chihuahuas are mean. Most of the chihuahuas I've ever met have such a Napoleon complex where they're tiny, but they act like they're big dogs and like, it, I just, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan. At Tessa Barcelo says, what inspired you to start writing music? I think probably the same thing that inspires most songwriters, which is uh, love and heartbreak and feelings. At Awkward Fan X Girl says, what fictional character would you like to meet in real life? Probably anybody at Hogwarts. I would love to just do like a semester abroad at Hogwarts amongst like Harry and Ron and Hermione. It just sounds so wonderful. Now let's hop on over to Facebook. Siobhan said, what made you want to be a songwriter? That's an interesting question because I don't think that I ever like ventured out to intentionally become a songwriter. I think it just happens. It's like I, I felt a particular way so I wrote a song about it and then it happened again and again. I don't think it was something that I necessarily chose to do. I think it's just something that I like needed to do to be able to process my own life. Alyssa says, what do you feel is your biggest strength as a songwriter and biggest weakness? Probably my biggest strength is my lyrics. That seems to be the thing that people connect with the most. It was so important to me when I was growing up to find songs that could say what I couldn't. So I think that I go into it wanting to be able to be that for somebody else. I think my biggest weakness is discipline. I'm a procrastinator and I like tend to get distracted by stuff. So I feel like I would be more productive and produce more songs if I were more disciplined to like sit down and work. But that's also kind of complicated because you can't really force it. It just happens when it happens so there have been times where I'm like I'm gonna sit down and I'm not getting up until I've written something amazing and usually if you're not in the exact right headspace it's not gonna happen and finally let's look at Instagram my lady of story says what's it like now that you're writing music full-time and how's the novel going so if you didn't know from previous videos I actually left my day job to write full-time it was a big adjustment it was really scary I was like second-guessing myself and I don't know it was just a big transition but now it's been a couple months I've gotten into a pretty good routine it feels a little more normal now and I I think for the most part it's been productive. Um, it gives me a lot more flexibility for booking studio dates and things like that. And the novel's coming along really well. I need to do another episode of writing a book is hard so I can give you guys a little bit of an update. But after a pretty long stretch of like totally avoiding it, I finally got into a good routine with that as well. So I am uh, I'm bopping right along. and. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling okay about it. K Starcher 1999 says, what out of your personal life or your career are you most proud of? I think the fact that I've made a career out of doing what I love that is sustainable full time is the thing that I'm the most proud of. That's the kind of accumulation of a lot of years of working really hard and not giving up on doing what I want to do. Coffee and Vi says, how did you have the idea to do the Porcelain Heart Reimagined DP the way you did it? So as you guys hopefully know, I put out um, a an EP recently called Porcelain Heart Reimagined where I took four songs off of my very first album that I did five years ago, Porcelain Heart, and created completely new versions of them. I had actually gotten the idea that I wanted to write another song about mental health. So I sat down and I actually wrote what became the new outro for 2007 Reimagined. But when I started looking at how I was going to flesh it out into a whole song, I realized that it made more sense as an extra new piece to 2007. I don't know, it just felt really right to have it as kind of a, like an update 
to 2007. So I tweaked it a little bit and um, originally I was thinking I was going to redo every song from Porcelain Heart, but as I was going back through and listening, the ones that I didn't end up redoing, I just couldn't think of any way to make them different enough, which is not to say that I think the versions that I did for the four tracks that I made are better than the old versions, but they were just like new ideas and it was kind of a personal challenge to myself and to Daniel, my producer, of like, how can we take this song and the essence of this song but give it a makeover? Speaking of which, producer Daniel Dennis says, when will the Christmas mantle make its debut? If you follow me on Instagram, which if you don't, you should, you probably know by now that I take my mantle decoration game very seriously. I am not very like home decor inclined. I've been able to kind of cobble together a house that looks decently cohesive, but for the most part, I will find something and I will just keep it the same as long as I possibly can. But the exception to that is my mantle above the fireplace. I have a spring summer mantle, a fall mantle, a Halloween mantle, a Christmas mantle, and a winter mantle. They are fabulous if I do say so myself. Now to answer Daniel's question, I am also a pretty firm believer in no Christmas until Thanksgiving. And you know what? If it makes you happy to listen to Christmas music and put up Christmas decorations for Thanksgiving, then fine. But that's just how I roll. So I will likely not put up my Christmas mantle until the weekend after Thanksgiving. Unicorn Lauren 542, if you could go back in time, when would you go back to? I don't know if I would. Like my first instinct is to say I would love to go back to a time period where they wore like really beautiful, full, fancy dresses. Then when I think about it more, I'm like, corsets suck. I'm sure that was heavy. And you have to imagine too, that that's a time period before they had like deodorant, tampons, indoor plumbing. It's easy to get caught up in the glitz and glamor of like movies from that time period, but I do not think that it would be very fun to go back to that time period. Jojo C. West says, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? That was from my dad. It was when I was a sophomore in high school and I was debating whether or not I wanted to try out for the fall play because usually sophomores and like lower classmen never really got parts. So I was so back and forth about it and finally my dad was like, the only way you can get guarantee that you're not gonna get a part is if you don't audition. And that's something that's really stuck with me when it comes to going for things and trying for things is the only way that you can guarantee it's not gonna happen is if you don't try. S underscore Han underscore Non. How do you confidently show the songs you've written? Are you ever worried about what people will say? It's really intimidating to put something that personal out into the world, especially on the internet where people can be so scathing because they can be anonymous. So you are opening yourself up to so much scrutiny about something that means a lot to you. So I think I still get nervous with, you know, every song that I put out. I mean, I will say I think I've gotten more confident over time because I know my craft better and I know what you guys respond to, but there are still definitely things that, um, you know, I talked about in a previous video with Classic. It didn't kind of hit the way that I thought it would, it makes me like question myself and you have to kind of work through it and say, this isn't gonna stop me from continuing to do what I wanna do. Giannina Co says, how many of your original songs are based on things that have actually happened to you? Most of them. Not all of them are like play by play, something that has happened to me exactly, but I think every single one of my original songs, even the ones that are book based, have a piece of something that I felt or experienced or gone through in them. Ceci the fangirl says, what are some of your upcoming plans for new music or will you focus on other things first? Well, now that I'm self-employed, I can do it all. Hopefully. But no, my, my plan for next year is to try and do the one song a month again, so it would have 12 total new releases. But I also am currently writing this book, and so far with the book, I've at least started writing five songs that pair with that, so it's gonna have its own soundtrack. Depending on how all of that goes, there could be a lot of new music next year. Nova Wolf 980 says, do you have a favorite book? It's always gonna be the Harry Potter series. I don't see anything ever unseating or dethroning that for my favorite books. Hope underscore Beale says, will you be making more sheet music available soon? So earlier this year, I released, I believe, eight songs of sheet music on musicnotes.com. I had you guys vote on what 
which songs that you wanted to have sheet music for and I picked the top eight, the ones that got the most votes and had them made. I think I might try and do another round sometime next year. It's quite a process. I have every intention of doing more, it's just kind of a matter of when. But I really do appreciate the fact that you guys want to be able to play these songs on piano, that means a lot. Diala J says, where would you want to live the most not counting where you are? I think it would be really fascinating to live in New York City for a while. It's a city that I just, I love going to visit and it just has such a like life and vibrancy to it. So if I knew that it was gonna be temporary, I think it would be fun to live in New York City. Otherwise I'd have to say probably England. I've been to England a couple of times and I just adore it. So I'd love to do a stint in England as well. That was a terrible like half asked English accent. I am sorry. Emily underscore Wicket 11 says, do you have songs planned that would be based off books? As of right now, I don't have any book based songs in the works, but I guess I can go ahead and reveal to you guys that I have one coming out that is based on Game of Thrones. More specifically, it is based on Daenerys. So you guys can look forward to that early next year. Well, that's all I got today. Thank you so much for your questions. Make sure you're following me on Instagram, on my Facebook page, and on Twitter. So that way you don't miss another chance to ask me stuff. And I will see you guys later. Bye!